Bah. What's up everybody? I hope you're safe and healthy and happy and doing okay. Someone commented that I should make it something like doing well or doing great or doing fantastic. What do you think? Let me know. So usually I'm not a big super shoe gal. Yes, I do review them from time to time, um, but I don't put a ton of miles in super shoes. They're just not my go-to or first choice of shoe to wear. But recently I did get the Hoka Rocket X2 and I really enjoyed that. So when it came time to purchase the shoe we're gonna review today, I figured I might as well give it a shot. And that shoe, as you saw in the intro, is the Nike Vaporfly 3. I've tried my fair share of Nike Super Shoes in the past, not all, but a lot of them. I had two pairs of the 4%, uh, I did have a pair of the Next Percents, and I tried the Alpha Fly OG, I didn't really like that. But I'm coming at this review with fresh eyes because I haven't really put my feet in Nike Super Shoes in quite a while. It's no secret that when most runners think of super shoes, the first brand they're gonna think to is Nike. They kind of own the super shoe market. They just seem to be the most favorited and sometimes most superior. So we're gonna see if these shoes work for me, an average middle of the packer. I'm no, by no means elite. I'm by no means throwing down five, six minute miles. Uh, so if you are like me and you're wondering if these shoes are for you, I hope that this video helps in some way. But of course, before we get to what I like and dislike about the Nike Vaporfly 3, you have to sit through the run footage. start today I do want to let you know that I purchased the Nike Vaporfly 3 with my own money so nobody can tell me what to say no one's gonna see this video before you and all of my opinions are always whether I buy the shoe or not my own starting with the upper as always Nike is using their fly knit material here I've said this in many videos I feel like fly knit feels different in every shoe it is obviously extremely breathable tons of ventilation especially in the forefoot there is really not much to this upper in the midfoot. The fly knit material is a bit rigid, so that can help with structure. But if we go to the back, the heel counter actually is somewhat sturdy. This upper is made to race, to be fast, to be efficient, but to not get in the runner's way at all. That's why it is extremely thin and super ventilated for those days where you're just going as fast as you possibly can. I didn't have any issues with this material. It didn't feel uncomfortable on my foot. Um, as you guys know, if you watch my videos on a regular basis, I really don't like when ankle collars have the padding inside of the shoe. I wore both a long so sock with it and I wore like an ankle sock and it did not rub up against my ankle or heel or Achilles, so I was happy about that. Despite the fact that there's really no structure in the midfoot, I do think I was able to get a fairly good lockdown. I did have to cinch the laces a bit, but they're actually ribbed. It's kind of hard to see on camera. I'll try to get a shot of it, uh, but this helped to keep the shoes tied and keep their tightness sort of locked in there so the shoe didn't loosen up over time. The tongue is not gusseted and it is kind of a weird configuration. It's separated and I think this part is supposed to go sort of inside the shoe and this is what's supposed to stick out. That's how I did it anyway. Turning the shoe this way, you have a nice accommodating amount of room in the forefoot, but I will be honest, I think this midfoot is extremely narrow as most of the Nike Super Shoes midfoots are. I certainly feel it when I'm walking around especially. It kind of fades away when I'm running, but this arch kind of sits really in there on your foot and it's super present and makes you think that the shoe is gonna be really uncomfortable to run in. 
Thankfully, like I said, it kind of faded away as it was running, but this is certainly going to be a shoe that is not accommodating to every type of foot. This is also supposed to be the lightest super shoe that Nike offers, and I think it has a lot to do with the construction of this fly knit. It's barely there. Um, I had no issues with hot spots, blisters, or irritation, shockingly, in the Nike Vaporfly 3. Uh, so I think they did a nice job here of giving you the absolute bare minimum, but still something that will work, but not for everyone. Moving on down to the midsole of the Nike Vaporfly 3, we have our favorite super shoe foam, the Zoom X foam. I really don't need to explain this to anybody. You guys know what Zoom X foam is. You know what it can do. It is extremely bouncy, very resilient, and just a fast AF foam. And of course, paired with this Zoom X is a carbon fiber plate that Nike calls their fly plate. It just works with that Zoom X to get rid of some of that squish and softness that would make you sink into the foam and gives you just an extra spring and propulsion forward that you need when you're trying to PR in a race. On Running Warehouse's website, it says that they also changed the configuration, the shape of this midsole. They've tried to make it a convex shape to create more stability, increase the energy return, and improve transition. So as you all may have guessed, this shoe feels very fast on foot. I have 26 miles in the Vaporfly 3. I've done two eight mile like, tempo workouts in it and I've done a 10 mile run in it to see how that would feel as well. My faster workouts consisted of five 1K repeats with a 2.30 minute rest in between. So I'll put those stats here so you can see what my pace is when I'm doing a faster workout. But yeah, when you're going fast in the Vaporfly 3, it feels incredible and definitely unmatched in that area. There's just something about a Vaporfly forefoot that cannot be duplicated in these other super shoes. I felt like once I got my turnover really going and I was at the pace that I wanted to be for that interval, it was easy to stay there. And the shoe just helped my legs turn over that much more easily. So for tempo workouts and much faster efforts, I really like this shoe. But what I didn't really love it for was my 10 mile run in it. Now I ran that at a slower pace. I'll put that here so you can see what I did. And that's more of the pace, more or less, of what I would be running in a marathon. Some of the things that maybe I didn't feel while I was running super fast, I started to feel in the shoe when I was going a bit slower. And you might sit here and say, well, that's because you're not fast enough to wear this kind of super shoe. But there are plenty of super shoes that I can run easy in and they feel just fine. For one thing, I started to feel that the shoe really isn't that stable and I could feel my ankle going in and after 10 miles, it gets to be a little bit annoying. And I really do wanna bring up that point because while they say they've made this shoe a little bit more stable, that could very well be the case. But I don't want people to think, especially us middle of the pack runners, that this shoe is going to be stable. It is still a neutral super shoe by Nike and it is still very much a narrow midfoot experience. So if you're a runner who over pronates, you might feel that in this shoe and it might be uncomfortable. It definitely was for me during during the 10 mile run. So because of that, I don't think that I would run a marathon in the Vaporfly 3. There are plenty of people who will and have and have no problems, but I don't think my foot strike and this shoe mesh super well together for a long distance. But I absolutely will be still using this for tempo runs and workouts. That's where it really works for me. And 10Ks, I have a 10K race coming up next week. I'll probably wear the Vaporfly 3 because I just feel like that four foot sensation when you're trying to bust out a fast time is exactly what I like and exactly what I need. Turning the shoe over to its outsole, we have some rubber in the forefoot. This is supposed to be two millimeters thinner than the previous version of the shoe. And you have two little pods of rubber in the heel 
hard to see because they're the same color as the foam, but they are there. Despite the sorber being thinner, I think it's actually pretty damn good. Like the traction in the forefoot was unbelievable. It has a really nice bite to it. I'm not seeing much wear, just maybe a little bit on the top by the toes of the shoe. But otherwise, I gotta give it to Nike for giving us a solid shoe that's gonna grip onto the pavement. Because especially when you're running fast and maybe like wetter conditions, you're not gonna want a shoe that's gonna slip out from under you. I am getting a lot of fraying in the shoe, like by the heel area. Um, again, I think this is probably from my 10 miler when I was running a little bit slower. I wasn't super up on my toes, I guess, as I could have been. Um, I don't think it's really gonna affect the ride of the shoe at all. It's just probably a cosmetic thing. But for how expensive this shoe is, I would love for it to last a little longer. Speaking of expensive, the Nike Vaporfly 3 is $249.95 on runningwarehouse.com. Certainly expensive, but probably not unexpected for people who have purchased Nike Super Shoes before. If you gotta have it, I will put a link in the description of this video. You can click that and pick up your own pair. Um, Running Warehouse does have a good amount of sizes, but not all, so just keep that in mind. Uh, and also keep in mind that this is an affiliate link with Running Warehouse, however, it doesn't mean much for you. It just helps out my channel, so I can keep making these videos and giving you the middle packer's perspective on a shoe that is made for the elites. I do want to finish this video by saying that just because I'm middle of the pack and this shoe doesn't necessarily work for me for marathons, that does not mean that you as another middle pack uh, runner will have the same issues. You might absolutely love the way this feels. Everybody's foot strike is different. Everybody's running is different and their preferences are different. So please do still give it a try. But I did want to give you my perspective as somebody who is not winning medals at the top of the pack every time I enter a race. Sometimes though, I do place in my age group, so I got that going for me. Well, everyone, that concludes my first impressions of the Nike Vaporfly 3. If you enjoyed this video, please like it down below and subscribe, and when you're done with all that, hit the notifications bell so you can find out every time I upload a new video. Which colorway of this shoe is your favorite? The pink, the proto colorway, that really cool kind of like fading, tan to orange to green colorway. Which one's your favorite? Comment down below. I have another video for you next week, but in the meantime, get out there, get on the grind, and don't forget to run like heller. See you next time. Wow. Here we have the Vaporfly 3, and here's the original Nike Vaporfly 4%. We have come a very long way. I mean, look at the difference in the midsoles. Let's turn it this way. Crazy. And if you touch this, it feels super firm. But at the time, I was like, wow, that's really soft. <laughs> Here's the difference in outsoles. Look at that. Despite how narrow this feels, I mean, look at the midfoot in this thing. Crazy.